today's lab, we are going to perform a simple distillation. And what we have in our distilling flask, which is a small 25 milliliter flask you see here, is a mixture of methylene chloride and um, with crystal violet. And it's a purple solution there. Uh, inside this flask, I also have about two to three boiling stones because uh, when we heat this up, as we've mentioned before, we really don't want to heat anything without some type of agitation, whether it would be boiling chips, boiling stones, or whether a magnetic stir bar. Um, this distilling flask is connected to what we call the side arm, um, and above that we have the thermometer adapter, and the thermometer adapter obviously holds the thermometer, and it's important to that you place the thermometer uh, at the correct position. We like the top of this thermometer to be flush with the side arm here that you see. So if you have it lower than that or higher than that, then when you measure the temperature at which the first drop distills over will probably be incorrect. We have the condenser, and inside the condenser there is a small hollow tube, and that tube is surrounded by a jacket of which cold water is going is pumping in and the water is coming out. And there's a reason it's called a condenser. We'll talk about that as the experiment progresses. We have a vacuum adapter attached to the condenser. And in this vacuum adapter, we're not using a vacuum source here. Uh, if you have something that is fairly high boiling, then it can certainly be to your advantage to hook this up to some vacuum pump that makes the boiling point become lower and easier to distill. We don't have the need for that today. And then this is going to be our receiving flask. We need some type of heat source. Uh, I'm using a heating mantle that's connected to a variac. And this variac, I can control what the temperature uh, is. We typically don't want to heat anything extremely high. Uh, but we need enough heat in order for the distillation to occur. And over here, just to kind of give you an idea, you need a steady stream of water that's coming through. It can just be a trickle. It doesn't need to be a tremendous amount of water. And this is something that you want to periodically check throughout the distillation because sometimes, just because of changes in pressure, sometimes the water will stop moving. So periodically keep a check. You just, you, again, you only need just a trickle of water, but it's important that you have some water coming through. Now the whole purpose of a simple distillation or any distillation in general is that you're trying to separate two substances that differ in their boiling points. Um, we're separating the methylene chloride from the crystal violet. The crystal violet is actually a solid that's been dissolved in the methylene chloride. So the best way, or the best, I guess, benefit of doing a simple distillation is whatever you're trying to distill, there has to be at least a 50 degree difference, 50 degree Celsius difference in their boiling points in order for it to be a successful separation of components. Simple distillation is just another method of purifying a mixture, separating them, in this case, based on their boiling points. The methylene chloride has a much, boiling, a much lower boiling point than the, obviously the crystal violet, so we have no trouble of having that at least 50 degree difference. Some other things about this I want to mention. Um, these are ground glass joints, and I'm just going to remove this so you can see here. These are special made. Um, they fit inside each other like a hand and glove. It's very important that you always grease these ground uh, glass joints. Uh, and when you do that, just give it a kind of a rotation to make sure that it's lubricated all around. Uh, two reasons, or main reasons, that you do that. If you don't grease these and you heat something to high temperatures, it is possible for these uh, joints to freeze together. And once they're frozen together, you cannot separate them again. Another benefit of using the grease, and we use a type of silicone grease, high vacuum silicone grease. And then the purpose, another purpose of that is when you're heating this, and we'll talk more about the, how the distillation happens, but there's vapors that will come up here and you don't want any of those vapors to escape 
because most of the things we use in organic chemistry are flammable. And if that's true, then if these vapors are escaping from these different crevices where these joints are connected, if those vapors get around to some heating source, then they could ignite. So you just want to take the time to do that. It's not a bad idea that once you're done greasing all the joints, you probably change gloves because some grease will typically get everywhere. Another thing to point out in terms of clamps, um, you don't want to go clamp crazy uh, because sometimes what happens if you put too many clamps on the apparatus, you can actually increase the pressure or tension at that joint and that can cause the apparatus or that piece of glassware to break. So I have two here which I think is um, useful. Uh, I never use these blue clips and these as far as connecting the distilling flask. Um, I always want a clamp on the distilling flask and I always want a clamp on the receiving flask. These blue clips are great to help keep joints connected but they're not very strong so if I'm collecting a lot of liquid here then it's possible for that blue clamp cannot hold that extra pressure or weight so then the flask falls out and then I have an accident there. So they're very useful connecting joints to each other, but I would never put a clamp here or blue clip here. I would never put a blue clip here. And they are temperature sensitive. If you have it here at the distilling flask and you're heating it pretty high, it is possible for that blue clip to melt because they are plastic. Um, in terms of distillation, what happens is that when we start heating this, the, the substance, the component that has the lower boiling point will start going into the gas phase. And those gaseous molecules of the methylene chloride will climb up through um, the uh, adapter here. And when it gets into the side arm, it will start moving down the side arm. And we can ask the question, where do gases go anywhere they want to? So once those vapor molecules move upward, they'll find that side arm and then they start traveling down the condenser and remember the condenser is cold we've got a continuous supply of cold water coming in and going out so once those gaseous molecules hit this cold condenser they'll condense back into the liquid and that's what we're going to be collecting in our receiving flask. Um, in terms of how fast you want to heat it um, you don't want to have a steady stream of drops coming over here because you're heating it too fast. If you heat it faster than you need to, then it's possible that you won't get as pure of a sample at the end. Um, so probably no more than 20 drops a minute coming over here. There should certainly be less, but I wouldn't have more where you couldn't actually see the drops. If you can't see the drops coming over, you're heating it too fast. Another thing about heating it too fast over here at this end is if you heat it too fast, you can have the material to bump up. So if this blue purple solution jumps up here, then some of that purple dye stuff can also carry over and then the separation is not going to be great as well. So we've got the water going. Uh, I'm going to turn the Variac on. Not very high. Uh, and I can't tell you what number this one is because you can have two identical ones. And number three on this one would give you a different amount of heat than number three on another one. So all we have to do now is just kind of watch. When this starts boiling, uh, I'll kind of keep a check on it. I don't want it boiling too fast. Again, I don't want things bumping up here. Uh, but then if it is, I'll cut it back. If it's not boiling enough, then I'll crank it up some more. And now it's just kind of a wait and see game at this point until we see that first uh, droplet come over into the receiving flask. The first drop uh, occurred at a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius and the uh, normal boiling point for methylene chloride is around 41 degrees 
Uh, that discrepancy could be due to a couple of things. One, atmospheric pressure. Uh, if we're not at 760, then that can certainly affect the boiling point. The other thing is in terms of the calibration of the thermometer. And I can check that after the experiment and see if it's a degree or two off. Uh, but both of those things can certainly affect what the boiling point that we see in terms of the first droplet content, uh, that was uh, collected. Temperature is pretty help, a constant around 38, 38.5 degrees. Uh, it looks like we're getting pretty low in here, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. And I won't really measure anything until it cools down a little bit. I just want to reemphasize this. I don't think I mentioned this before, but whenever you do some type of distillation, uh, you never really want to distill to dryness. Um, if that happens, there's a couple reasons for that. Sometimes there's some chemicals that may contain impurities, and if those things, uh, such as peroxides, and when they get dry, they can actually become somewhat explosive. So you never want to distill anything to dryness, plus the fact that if there's nothing in there and you're heating something that's dry, uh, typically that flask it does have the capability to uh, crack. Um, you don't need much. Looks like there's at least a couple mils in there. And there's always going to be some stuff that may be condensing back down. So you don't need a lot of material left in here. But it's better to err on the side of caution to stop it before you think you need to. Eventually. We're going to let that cool. The temperature, last temperature I saw was around 38.5. This is our uh, distillate that we've collected. When the apparatus cools a little bit, I'm going to separate that. We'll measure the liquid, how much we got here, distilling. The purple that's inside here. Now there's still a little bit of your methylene chloride, not very much. But the purple, notice, stay behind in the distilling flask. That contains the methylene, uh, or the crystal violet, and then a little bit of methylene chloride. Uh, but most of the methylene chloride was able to distill. If you notice, there's no purple color inside that receiving flask. This is the distillate that we've just collected. I just want to also remind you that when you're separating, remember we had all these joints with grease. Uh, before you do anything like to measure anything or clean it, make sure that you take paper towel or chem wipes and to get that grease out because if you don't do that and you start to wash it, then you're going to, um, that grease will be pushed down in the flask and it's very difficult to remove. So I have a graduated cylinder here. I'm going to pour the contents into that graduated cylinder and we're going to measure how much of the methylene chloride we got back. And it looks like we got 8.7 uh, milliliters back. 8.7 mils back. And then I'm going to measure with the pipette. It's such a small amount and it may not even be measurable with the graduated cylinder I have. But I'm going to see how much of the liquid was left behind. And it only looks about 0.2 mils of the uh, material, the mixture that was left in uh, the distilling flask. Barely just enough to measure. The question is, where did the other material go? There's always going to be some material that's still left in the condenser that never uh, moved over to the receiving flask. Even though we had grease, um, there's always a possibility that you could lose some vapors through wherever these joints are. Uh, less likely so much of that. I think probably more could be still left in this condensing column here. 8.7 mils, that's a pretty good return in terms of the separation of the methylene chloride from the crystal violet that had that purple color. Last thing we need to do is just clean up. Uh, we will put this in a halogenated solvent. We always have to worry about our waste since this does have halogens on there. We have to put this in the uh, non-flammable halogenated solvent. Uh, so we'll put that in there along with 
whatever residue of the uh, methylene chloride with the crystal violet left in there. Clean up and then good to go.